Hey, it's Aaron, the Metal Theologian. It's funny, it's like later until uh, I turn it on and it gets darker. Ah, whatever, fuck it. So, a uh, couple things before I forget. First of all, uh, there's this channel on YouTube that I've been kind of flipped on. A couple people have kind of asked me about some of the shit I've had in the background. It's called Occult Demon Cassette. And I'll try to run for a link in, but it's like that too. Occult Demon Cassette, all, all the words singular, you know. So, um, anyway, they have all this, like, weird, like, uh, I mean, like, old, like, fucking satanic panic videos and, like, uh, weird instructional videos. Some really good shit. It's entertaining as hell, and it's good TV for, uh, watching, uh, for you listening to records while you're watching TV, you know, you only sort of paying attention. So, anyway, that's it. Another one that has some good shit is Hamilton Trash Cinema. But a cult demon cassette is the weirdest one. Here's another thing. I talked about this record a couple videos ago uh, by Magnet. And I thought it something like, you know, it's pretty decent. It's not great, you know. Well, I kind of changed your mind now. This thing is fucking fantastic. I'll tell you why. This first song was like rocking, right? But when they're not like rocking like this, they go off in this like weird like freak metal territory. And uh, yeah, we'll let it run for a little bit. Like the uh, second song, which... Uh, it's called Mliji Bellum Pod Saboyu Nye Chuya Strani. There you go, pronounce it just for your entertainment. We exist without feeling our land underneath, is the translation. I have no idea what the fuck that would be about. But it's just fucking, it's like batshit, dude. This fucking record is crazy, and I didn't really clue into it until just a couple listens ago, so. Alright, so, what's been playing? Alright, so I, I've been listening to kind of some cheesy stuff. And, um... You know, sometimes it's cheesy good and cheesy bad. And, uh... This record... Sucks. Yeah, the Zion reissue this recent one. I was hoping it would be some cool, like, old, like, Jesus metal thing. I mean, it's old Jesus metal, but it's just crap, man. Because it's cheesy on the wrong side, you know what I mean? It's cheesy, but just kind of, like, puts, like, a smooth, a sheen of, like, of, of, uh, I don't know, just, like, slime or fucking everything on this record, you know what I mean? And it's, uh, you know, it's not terrible. It's just that, um, it's not that good. <laughs> and some of it's the songs, but a lot of it is just sort of the cheese factor, you know? Um... You know, a record that kind of falls on the correct side of that line while still being super cheesy, I think, is this Chaos record. I don't think people show this very much, but yeah, Agent Killers. Some bozos. I want to say they're from San Diego. Yeah, San Diego. I mean, you know, and they're goofy and shit, too. I mean, like that picture right there and shit. But these guys, even though they're super cheesy, like, they're still fun to listen to. You know what I mean? It's like they stay on the right side of that. The songs are still cool. You go, God damn, that's kind of corny. I'd probably be a little embarrassed to be in that band myself, right? But overall, it's just kind of fun. Where's Zion, is it, you know? Actually, there's another thing. Yeah, there's a cover of Jailhouse Rock on here, which is such a boomer thing to put on your record. I was a little bit, you know, that shit makes me laugh these days. It's early, it's 81, so... Yeah. Now, this one's cheesy, too, but it's fantastic. And that's Hellion from uh, Argentina, actually. First of all, look at how great that cover is. And second of all, check out Sonny Tunaro's mustache right there. Because you can't neglect that shit, right? But yeah, this is, um, this, this is one of those records that leaves you wanting more. It's seven songs. The whole thing is pretty short. There's a lot of cheese, like especially in the same style in that. It's like it's just, you know, not super well developed in that. But Jesus Christ, it is a good record, man. It's like brimming over with sincerity. The songs are just like really good and hooky and it draws you in. And I've been listening to it almost every day. Yeah, so there's that. Here's another one I pulled out. This is one I hadn't played in kind of a long time. This is the Joe Hasselvander Lady Killer solo album. Or ostensibly a solo album because uh, even though it says that... Uh, he plays all this shit. Apparently this is a fake one, too. I kind of chatted with uh, John a bit Bop Boom, uh, who knows more about the sort of metal ploitation stuff than I do, but uh, 
Yeah, apparently there's some kind of shady circumstances, but this thing is just like, it's really sort of spare sound, really kind of doomy vibe. But like, it's like, sort of like a doomier version of like a Motorhead or something like that, as far as a straight ahead writing style. But it's, but it's not even the same as Motorhead. This is a really good record, so, uh, not that I don't love Motorhead too, right? But, uh, you know. So anyway, yeah, this is a really cool record right here, man. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, it's funny. I kind of pulled some things out just to listen to because, uh, you know, you pull one thing out and you see a bunch of other shit that's just sort of nearby and start going for it. So, like, since I was listening to Cheesy shit, I decided to pull this one out because this is one of my favorite Cheesy records. Super cheesy, man. Some of these songs. Like, Silent Victim is like a hooky rocker, and nothing to do but rock is like pretty rocking, you know? But like, Jealousy or Why Lie, God, are those cheesy ass tunes, man. But this is a fucking fun record from start to finish. You know, again, there are eight songs on here, so I think like making your record not too long is kind of part of the key there, you know? So that's Hammer on from Chicago. So, what's nearby, right? Well, this guy was nearby. I don't think it's too, this, we're necessarily directly adjacent, but how is Eve, man? I haven't played this one in a while either, but this one's great. You know what's funny is back in the day, I like, didn't really think much of these guys. Um, and then even like, well, back in the day, I kind of ignored them. Like, uh, when I sort of like was really getting into metal again in the 90s, sort of after a little bit of plateau there, like late 90s, early 2000s, I checked this one out and didn't think much of it. Now I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, because this record is awesome. It's just super good. Fucking obnoxious sounding singer. Great cover, right? I mean, look at the fuck look at his hands. <laughs> That's just super heavy, kind of snarly and awesome. You know, it reminds me of Nasty Savage, actually. But it's like a heavier version even of Nasty Savage. Alright. There's another one. So I actually haven't gotten to this one yet, but I played it so many times when I first got it. That's a Hammer Witch. Can you see that? This is where this record starts to go off the rails, by the way. Alright. Can you see that at all? Fucking Hammer Witch. This record is so good. Fucking every song on here. It's really an EP, six songs. Burn at the Stake. Return to Salem, Live for Metal. God damn, that's a song I get in my head all the time. So good. It's kind of hard to find, unfortunately. I hope someone reissues it. Um, there was a bootleg out of Brazil a few years ago, but... I don't know. I, you won't be able it if you can find it, of course. So I don't want to rub that shit in, though, because I know that one's hard to get. Yeah, what else? Evil Friendship by Deliverance, and actually this one too. It's funny because neither of these is really quite like Devil's Meat. Evil Friendship was actually my first one, and this is the last one I got. Well, it just still comes through. I probably won't get a copyright in 40 years, so. Anyway. Yeah, fucking Deliverance. You know, the Evil Deliverance. These guys are, um. Yeah, this completes the Book of Lies trilogy, by the way, which is kind of funny. Especially because it's supposedly fake, you know, but evil friendship and devil's meat. It's really ominous kind of shit. This one has kind of had more sort of orchestration in it, which, you know, it has orchestral arrangements, but it's probably just like some synths or some shit like that, you know? Um, yeah, great records, man. I love this fucking band. A really weird sounding band. If you're into Doom, and you haven't listened to Deliverance, you're fucking missing out. Because it's Doom, but it's Doom on its own level, you know what I mean? It doesn't sound quite like anything else. Um, Alright, what else do we have? Oh yeah, here's another one. On the category of shit I got because of people uh, in the vinyl community here, right? The vinyl community. Uh, I'd never given this record a chance, because I'd heard it was bad, and it's so late as Riot goes. I mean, I like Riot, okay, I'm not an enormous fan, but like, you know, I have like maybe three or four of their early records, and I play them from time to time, they're really good, you know? 
um, this one's a lot more like a straight metal record, but it's really a good record in its own right, you know? It's not the greatest thing ever, but again, you know, it's one of those things that I've checked out and sort of put it on, and I put it on again, and put it on again, because it's just a fun fucking record, you know what I mean? It's gonna be like, you know, a 7 out of 10 or something like that, but man, a 7 out of 10 ought to keep you entertained for a week and listen to it every day. So, hey... That would be a little bit much. <laughs> All right. Oh, here's one that's kind of cheesy, too. Yeah, I pulled this up for the cheese factor, man. Fucking Hammerhead. I think these guys are from Oregon. No, Tacoma, Washington. So, uh... Yeah, check that out. It's a fucking great cover, right? Especially with that pink, so it's extra intimidating. You know, this record is really... Uh, the songs are really written like glam, but they're played heavy. Um, and I've talked about that kind of shit before, but, but these guys just aren't quite as good as, uh, you know, like a Leather Nun or something like that. But this is still a fun record, man. Araki and Nightmares is probably the best song. Yeah, it kind of blends together a little bit, but like Neighbors is all weird and shit. Listen to this. What the fuck? It's a weird ass chorus. This is, the only thing I can think of is this sounds remotely like is Trollferos from uh, Quebec, if you know them. That's kind of a rare record, too. It's fucking batshit, man. It's insane. I love it. So I've been like balancing out like all this sort of like weird indie shit with like this really well produced record. And I don't mean overproduced, I mean well produced, like legit. This record's fantastic. This is when I got kind of late as far as overkill goes for my sort of stash of overkill records, but um it's worth the wait, man. It's a fucking good record. You know, I don't know if it's my favorite overkill, but it might be. I know it's a lot of people's favorite overkill, but it's definitely an awesome record. Actually, my brother's always raved about this one. It's also Metal Ron does, too. Alright. Oh, hey, I'm going to talk about this thing, too. Okay, I showed this Crocus record in my last video, and I was like, oh, that ought to be some cool, cheesy shit, too, right? You know? Dude, this record sucks. And I really wanted to like it, man. It was at the point where it was just crap, man. But it sounds like fucking... I mean, I wanted to I hate to say ACDC. But to the degree that it sounds like that, it sounds warmed over. And just, like, not good, man. The songs are bad. Playing doesn't hold your interest. I was like, it's, what the fuck? That's why people didn't like this one. Here's the other reason I'm busting it out, though, is I showed off that it was signed, right? Because I just sort of got this. I don't even remember where I got this, but I know I didn't pay anything for it. It has those signatures, though. But I found this note tucked away in there. Look at this. Yeah, if you can't, in case you can't read that, this, this Crocus album was signed in my presence at the House of Guitars at the time of Crocus's appearance in Rochester in 81. I certify that these autographs are genuine. Douglas Dillu, it looks like. And a phone number with no exchange, which is a little uh, mark of off. I mean, no, it has an exchange. It doesn't have an area code, which is a little mark of authenticity. Because back in the old days, we used to have to dial the area code. That was before all these young whippersnappers came along and fucked up the phone system, right? Here's another one. It's a cool record, man. Rapid Tears. You'd think they were totally wussy, but they're actually pretty rocking. Canadian band. They made this and they made an EP at at least 145. And there were a couple different editions of this one, too. There's another cover this got released with, too, I think. It's called Honestly. Again, it sounds super wimpy. There's a mermaid on the cover. But but this is a real... This is a fun record, man. Again, another one. It's easily a seven... And the mustaches are 10. Look at that fucking... 
you got three awesome mustaches, especially this guy's mustache, because that little wimpy thing, that wimpy mustache, is like what you think this record's gonna sound like, but it's actually pretty fantastic. So yeah, where is this from? I want to say somewhere like where everyone lives in Toronto or something. Yeah, Toronto. Still a really cool record. I kind of underappreciated, I think. These Rapid Tears records I don't think are that hard to find. Of course, I've had them for a long time now, so I don't know. Here's another one that's really not worth searching out. This Dry Sill record. Yeah, I've wanted to check this band out for a long time because they're from Iceland. And there are just so few Icelandic bands at all, but it's really kind of mediocre. I mean, it's not bad, but it's just kind of ordinary. It doesn't really have, like, a spark that, like, really grabs you. You put it on, and, you know, at the end of side one, you're okay listening to side two. You know what I mean? It doesn't just, like, piss you off like that. But, you know, it's not... <laughs> it doesn't live up to that devil tattoo. <laughs> See, if it were as good as that, that would be a ten. You know, it's funny because this record's kind of ordinary too. This dungeon record, which I'm pretty sure some other people have shown too. Again, nearby in the alphabet, right? Oh, I always have to show off these Library of Congress stickers when I do that. Look at that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyway, um... Yeah, but this one just does it right, you know what I mean? It kind of, it, it's really kind of about the same caliber as that Dry Zone record. It's just, the songs just catch you a little bit more. It's just kind of a more interesting record, even though it's, you know, not really a face melter, you know? Maybe that's from Minnetonka, Minnesota. That's practically Iceland if you're going by the weather, right? Might be worse than Minnesota. Yeah, here's another cheesy one I pulled out too, Decoy Paris. Again, they're pretty rocking, you know? Yeah, solid record. Five songs and one sort of weird little outro. It's really sincere, definitely on the commercial end from the writing standpoint, but just a really fun listen. And it's, like I said, pretty rocking. That's not as much as, uh, well, let's say Hammerhead, but you know something, it's also the production's a lot better than Hammerhead too, so maybe that's not fair. You know? Yeah, these guys are from Chicago. But I think they had a song on one of those uh, Silverfin compilations too, now that I'm thinking about it. Another one that's cheesy, but great. And actually, only partially cheesy. The fucking Q5, Steal the Light. Man, lots of Pacific Northwest bands today, huh? These guys are from Seattle, weren't they? Some dank face paint there. There we go, man. It's a very cool record. It took me a couple of listens to really get into this one, but uh, it's an awesome record. And here's another one that's batshit, man. Fucking this French band, Blasphème, or Blasphème, or whatever, how you say that in French? Like, it's, it, it's like rockin' for a while, and then it kind of goes off into La La Land. It's just like in these weird-ass places. You know, I'm even gonna throw it on for a minute, because fuck it, why not? Nobody else gives a shit about Blasphème, so I might as well. Magnet, everybody. On the Melodia label there. There's a famous Soviet label. Oh shit, I hope I can find the inner. I feel like I'm getting warm here. Yeah, there it is. It's like you're trapped when you're holding the record like that. You know, you want to fucking do something else, but you can't set it down because you don't want to fucking scuff it up. You know what's funny about this record cover? My kind of favorite thing about this. You see, it's like Last Supper. But um, that painting doesn't look like that anymore. Because they've restored it. 
And so all that dirt and shit that's all over it, that's all been cleaned up, but it's really bright now. But, all you uh, young whippersnappers watching this shit, back in 1985, no, 83 this came out. Yeah, that's what the fucking Last Supper looked like. It's a weird thing to think about that way, you know? Alright, so let's check this shit out. Yeah, they're like these weird, like, pop songs, like, stuck in with these, uh, you know, metal songs. And obviously, it's like, it's a metal presentation. I mean, generally speaking, if you're trying to, if you're going for the pop success, you don't really normally name yourself something like Blaspheme, you know? So, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. Yeah, um... Alright, so what else is nearby? Dum Dum Bullet. Now I finish it with this one. This is a French one. Awesome, like kind of a motorheadish vibe. Very sort of punky, rough around the edges. But unapologetically metal, too, you know? Look at those guys. Look at that singer, actually. He looks like he's kind of old compared to the rest of the guys, you know? Maybe not. Maybe they all look a little bit old. Anyway, yeah, this is kind of tough to find, too. It's on a Sippy label out of France. I'm looking for a date, but I don't see one. Um, yeah, I don't remember. I want to say this is 84 or 86 or something like that. But, um, that's really cool, though. Here, okay, here's another one. Sort of speaking of like ACDC ish stuff, man. These guys are from Argentina. We got a couple of Argentine records here that I busted. I watched an old video of Rain's where he was talking about Argentine metal, so it kind of went nuts a little bit. So, yeah, Riff, this band actually had Popo in it, who uh, from Popo's Blues, who uh, at least Corey has talked about. Stavros from uh, Spinning Greek has talked about him, too. Now, this isn't like a, the lost Popo's Blues record. I mean, this does sound different, you know? Um, it, sort of, it trades in that 70s vibe for an 80s vibe, but it's early 80s. It's very like new wave of British heavy metal-ish. And uh, has a lot of boogie going on, adding up to a pretty fun listen, man. 1981. Yeah, good stuff. What else do I have? Trend Loco. Let's look at that one. Like Crazy Train, maybe? I don't know. Really kind of... I don't know, man, just has like a fucking classic metal sound, you know, it's just great, you know. Has a little bit of sort of a foreign vibe to it, you know, it doesn't sound like the band is from, you know, Brooklyn. But, uh, I don't know, man, it's like metal is sort of a uniting force, like, around the world or something. But these motherfuckers in Argentina can then do the same thing, it's still great. With their own sort of weird spin on it, you know. Here's another one from Argentina. I've really been playing a lot. Malón, Espíritu Combativo. Yeah, there we go. And this is a pretty heavy record, man. Like, that cover looks a little bit wimpy. Although, look at that horse. It's all fucking weird. And then that other guy on the top there, whatever that is. But it's kind of more like what they look like than what the cover looks like. I mean, if you listen to metal and you see a band that looks like that, you pretty much know what you're in for. Uh, that's pretty much what this record delivers. So there you go. Malone, I guess. Like melon, only with an A. I don't know what the fuck it means. Someone just spells Tan. Who knows Spanish? Can tell me. Yeah, well, he was on about 23 minutes in, so. Uh... I'll just show one more, man. It's the fucking first Scorpions on Billingsgate. So, uh... Yeah, because I busted these out, too, man. Because Scorpions are great, man. I've actually kind of listened to a lot of 70s stuff, too, intermixed with the shit. But mostly bigger names, like Aerosmith and Montrose. I've been playing a lot in that. And the Scorpions one came out, too. And Fly to the Rainbow did, too. But... Kind of sticking with the mellow ones. Oh, here's the Gatefold. such a waste of cardboard, really. <laughs> it's fucking stupid-ass art. But it's awesome. Alright, well, I think that's about it. Uh...
You know what I'm doing right now? I'm looking because I like to put my shit away, but I generally like to talk about it in the video first. So I'm going, okay, what's still out here that like I need to talk about now or else it's gonna be sitting out in front of my stereo for another fucking week so I get around to making a video again. So it's actually the thought process that goes in at the end. And I think I'm pretty well covered. So thanks for watching. And we'll talk soon. <laughs>